What is up guys? Today we are talking about coachability um, and what it means to be coachable. One of the traits that I see that tends to be a fairly common denominator amongst you know, some of the best lifters or lifters that seem to progress is that they're all coachable. Every single one, every single person I meet who's at a high level or is progressing, they all share this common trait and that is they are coachable. So I wanna to talk to you today about what that means why some people aren't coachable, or why some people um, don't respond well to coaching, and how you can ho hopefully improve your coachability. So yes, obviously the conversation has to start as to what does it mean to be coachable and what is coachability? To me, coachability uh, is a broad, obviously broad term, which basically all encompassing means someone's ability to respond to and accept and take and grow from criticisms. Whether they be positive criticisms or negative con criticisms, constructive criticisms, and sometimes, unfortunately, destructive criticisms. So, a coachable athlete, someone who's coachable, is someone who's able to take criticisms and grow from those things. But even more so, or a level above that, is someone who seeks criticisms. And probably the best example I can think of of someone like this that I know personally is my friend Liz Craven, uh, who's a powerlifter coach out of Canberra, ACT, Australia's capital. She's actually competing this weekend at the Arnold Sports Festival in the US. She's Australia's best raw powerlifter currently and arguably ever. And she's someone who constantly seeks improvement. I've been friends with her for a long time and I know that she respects me uh, highly as a coach and for my knowledge and she always seeks to communicate with me and ask for feedback and asks for honest feedback and says, what am I doing wrong? Man, this girl's 52 kilos. If you don't know who she is, look her up. I'll put some links in my description. 52 kilos, squats 155. She has the world record squat. Deadlifts 180, bench is 87 and a half. M much better lifter than I am. And she asks me for advice. What am I doing wrong? What can I do better? Tell me straight up. What am I doing? Help me, help me, help me, right? This is someone who's at an extremely high level, not afraid to ask for help. And not, not just not afraid, seeks advice. If you look beyond that, I know a lot of high level lifters who have been self-coached for a long time, seek advice, right? Another good example, my friend Kelly Branson, the great white uh, North juggernaut from uh, Canada. Did reasonably well at Worlds, he's been predominantly self-coached for a long time. And we, we got the opportunity to hang out after Worlds and he said to me, dude, I need help, man. I need to find myself a coach. And, you know, we, we kind of like explored some ideas and he ended up um, taking on coaching from Mike Tashira, right? From the RTS crew, very good coaching group. But the fact of the matter is that he sought coaching. He said, I need help, I want to improve, I need coaching. If you look at it from a kind of smaller scale, Sometimes a lifter will have a coach, but struggle to take on that feedback and take on the feedback that their coach provides them and they fail to have the trust and the belief in what their coach is providing. And that can be due to a number of reasons. Whether there isn't enough buy-in, you know, that is, you know, you don't truly believe that what the coach is providing for you is the right thing for you. Whether that's not enough trust in the actual coach's ability. You, know, you don't think that they're actually that good but you feel that they're the, your only option at the time or your best option at the time, whatever it might be. But all that aside, the fact of the matter is, being coachable is a really important trait that good lifters, lifters that progress, all possess. So why do lifters find it hard to take on advice? Why do lifters find it hard or athletes find it hard to seek advice? And why do you potentially uh, not take on the feedback that you're given. I think one of the things, uh, I guess especially in powerlifting, that's the source of all this is ego, unfortunately. And a lot of powerlifters like to think that they don't have ego. You know, uh, powerlifting is not an ego sport. You know, we don't quarter squat, we don't bounce our bench presses, we pause, restrict, we squat deep. You know, this isn't ego lifting. But a lot of the time, there's a lot of ego in powerlifting. Um, I forget exactly what the quote was, but there was a quote floating around a long time ago. Oh, I forget what it was. It might have been an Arnold Schwarzenegger quote. You know, 
on a, a meme or something that said something along the lines of, if you don't bench two plates, don't tell me how to bench or something, which I think is absolutely ridiculous because your ability, this is something I talked about last time, your ability as an athlete says nothing about your ability as a coach or your knowledge, right? I said this last time in my, in my post last week that I know a lot of lifters that aren't very strong but are great coaches, very knowledgeable. So just because someone's not as good as you, just because someone's not as strong as you or as experienced as you, doesn't mean that I don't have advice to offer you. You know, I'd like to think that I'm a reasonably experienced coach, but I've met people that are far less experienced than I am, far less knowledgeable. And sometimes, man, they just drop nuggets. They just say something that just clicks and you're like, whoa, like I've never thought of it like that. You know, I'm, I'm reasonably good at my job, but I've never thought of it like that. You know, and I think it can be really easy to dismiss what people have to say because your ego gets in the way, because you don't think that, you dismiss everything that they say, right? And, you know, one of, the, one of the things that I like to say is that every single person in this world knows something that you don't. Every single person knows something that you don't. So be open-minded, be willing to listen to what people have to say, and be willing to listen to what your coach has to say. So, continuing on from this idea, I guess, in, in terms of being coachable, how can you improve your coachability? The first thing is to accept that you can get better. Right? And that there are new ideas out there and that the things you know aren't the be all and end all. Right? I have my own methods, right? I have my own techniques. There are certain ways that I teach people to squat. There are certain ways that I teach people to bench press. There are certain ways that I teach people to deadlift. There are certain ways that I write my programs. There are certain things that I look for, okay? And these methods work but there are other ways to do things and there might be better ways to do things and there might be better techniques to take on board. So understand that what you know and what you do might be good, but it isn't necessarily optimal. What you do and what you know might work, but it isn't necessarily optimal. So that's the first thing. The first thing is you need to accept and understand that you can get better. The second thing is that you need to want to get better, which sounds ridiculous because we all want to improve, don't we? But you have to be willing to Accept that you want to improve and that you're willing to do what it takes to get there. Whether that's seek guidance from someone that's more experienced than you or seek guidance from someone that's better than you in the gym or seek guidance from someone that's not as good as you in the gym or invest, spend money right, on a coach, whether it be online or in person. Okay, I had the opportunity yesterday to actually coach a couple of girls in a one-on-one -on -one session, just a technique session just a technique adjustment, first time that I've worked with these two girls, but I've known them for a very long time. One of them has been lifting for, I couldn't even tell you, 15 years, right? 20 years, far longer than I have. And the funny thing is they said to me yesterday, we don't have our ego involved. We, we've been lifting a long time, but our ego is not involved. We said, we need help with our deadlifts, so we're gonna come and find it. And that's what they did. We, we spent an hour working on the deadlifts and man, it was really productive. It was really, really productive. So sometimes you just need to, uh, you know, Go out and seek that help, seek that guidance, and be coachable, be open-minded, be willing to listen, be willing to learn, because like I said, there's, uh, you know, every single person in this world, ooh, hope that wind's not too bad. Every single person in this world knows something that you don't. Every single person in this world has something to offer you. So be open-minded, be willing to listen. And the fourth thing, I guess, or third thing, I don't even know what I'm up to, is learn from different sources, okay? Be coachable and learn from different sources. So I know a couple of guys that have been under the guidance or tutelage of one coach for a long time, you know? So you might have a mentor, which is great. I hope you do, especially if you're a young coach. You might have a mentor, but some people kind of get stuck with their one mentor. Obviously you show loyalty, but they only ever learn one way, right? This is how, you know, for example, uh, Mark Ruperto, right? Has a certain way of teaching squats. That's good, that's fine. Some people don't agree. But if you only ever have Mark Ruperto as your coach or as your mentor, you'll only ever learn that one way. Or you might, uh, you know, be under the guidance of someone else, you know, and they have their certain ways and their own methods. Like I've got my certain ways and my methods. But you need to learn from different people, right? If you've never worked under an RP or an auto regulation strategy, maybe that's something you should look into, right? Be willing to learn. If you've only ever done RP and auto regulation, maybe you should try learning from a percentage based coach, someone that prefers percentage based. Maybe if you've only ever done raw, maybe you should try equipped, right? Be coachable, be willing to learn, be open-minded, try new things, explore the ideas, take on feedback, take on criticism, and grow from those experiences. Don't get caught up in thinking that this person's an idiot, they don't know what they're talking about, okay? So, 
I hope you take something out of that. Um, something that I've been thinking about for a little while is coachability and people's ability to, yeah, again, take on criticism, grow from those experiences, take, remove their ego from the situation, and most importantly, seek advice, seek help, right? You are not the greatest coach or athlete in the world. Neither am I, and no one is, okay? So go out there, seek knowledge, grow, become better, be coachable, listen, learn, get stronger. Peace.